Check, check, check. Hey, I got audio. It's funny how in the summer it's like cold and rainy, which means it's 64 degrees Fahrenheit. But in the winter, if it was 40 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm out in like a t-shirt and shorts. So anyway, it's a little bit chilly. Have a hoodie on. I guess I can take the hood off. It's just kind of like drizzling and not so great out. But anyway, I uh, did a cat video this morning, which it's currently August 1st as of right now while I'm recording this. So the cat videos I put up like immediately. So it's already out. Yeah, I just do them for fun. I have two cats and every once in a while I just follow them around with the video camera. Anyway. <laughs> Got a monotone idea for a verse, which I'm just gonna do that. I might do some overdubs though to make it a little bit more interesting. And pre chorus, I'll probably go like. Then I'm gonna switch to major, because that was all minor stuff, or the chorus. I tapped out of tempo like when I came up with that riff, so I got 103. I have a drum loop going. Actually, it's off screen right now. There it is. Um, this is like a artificial intelligence drummer thing built into Logic, which is kind of cool. So like when I change the tempo, the drum loop just changes right with it. So I don't have to like fart around with it. So I'm going to do the left and the right right now and just have it create a nice big stereo image. Then I'll decide if I want to do overdubs, a guitar solo, bass guitar, drums, and vocals, usually in that order. So. Here we go. I just finished tracking the left side, now I'm gonna do the right side. My song structure is typically just an A and a B part. This is actually A, B, C, I guess, because I have that monotone verse thing that I go into the minor pre-chorus and then the chorus, but I just repeat that three times. I doubled the last chorus, but other than that, pretty much fits the song structure. Um, anyway though, let me just do this right side. I'm gonna do an overdub. I might do the same thing on both sides, except on uh, this side, I'm actually going to turn on, well, I have it on my octave effect, so it's just gonna sound a little more synth-like. I'm thinking I'm gonna go uh, B, C, but I'll just do it on the G and the B string. Um, I'm gonna go up to the E. Keep in mind, this is down a minor third, so it's not actually those notes, but. Okay, so I'm going to do this other side. I think I'm going to... I got an octave up on the other side. And I got an octave down. Should sound cool. So I turned those dubs down like 3 dB, which uh, I just don't want them to be too overpowering. And uh, now I'm going to do the improvised guitar solo. So... I just uh, put my guitar back into standard, which that's not as hard as it sounds. I just have to hit the button on my Digitech drop tune and it's right back. <laughs> for the bass part the uh, guitar part in the verses I mean it's kind of honestly boring so I'm gonna spice it up a little bit with the bass part so I'll probably just do like a quick scale run something like that and then uh, the pre-chorus will just follow along 
chorus goes to. Something like that. Yeah, that works. Okay. Let me just record it. All right, so I'm going to sit down and uh, start tracking the drums. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to play, but I usually just kind of like improvise it when I sit down, so... I uh, came up with a melody. Oh, don't undo typing, you jerk. Um, <laughs> I uh, typed up some lyrics. I think I can get through it. I did a practice run or two. Um, it's going to depend on whether I can get through the verse chorus and then remember the verse part when I get back to it, because, yeah, it's just a pain in the butt. New song and all. But anyway, let me just try this and see what happens. Alright, I'm done. So, mostly due to laziness, it's getting a little later and I want to go in and grab something to eat. <laughs> I'm not going to do any harmonies. Actually, I think it sounds good enough as it is. Uh, I'm going to throw the compressor EQ and verb. I don't track with it because uh, it's annoying in my headphones to hear that when I'm singing. Um, yeah, I did like two false starts and then I got right through it. Like I said, new song. Kind of like trip over the words and all that kind of stuff because like just not used to singing it. I keep getting better at it though. It's kind of cool because like these videos really uh, help me become a better musician because like if I'm just doing stock music stuff and I'm just like recording like things like I do otherwise, I can just do like a section and then loop it and if I screw up, I can punch in this. I got to play all the way through the sucker without messing up. So it's kind of like a live performance and I'm doing all of the instruments. So it has to be real like <laughs> Not much editing going on. Actually, there's, like, no editing going on. Anyway, uh, yeah, though, I'm going to bounce this down, line it up with the video, make the song out of it. If you check out my description box, you're going to find three different things. You're going to find the lyrics. You're going to find a link tree link where you can purchase and stream my music. And then the very first link is going to be a link that I just started putting in. And that goes to Faith Center in Glendale, California. Well, their website anyway. It's a church that I... Well, I watch the pastor all of the time because uh, they do live broadcasts whenever they're doing the service. And then they just have like a 24-hour streaming app where they just play... It's like 50 years worth of teaching or so. And they just kind of like play a bunch of stuff on that. They play it on the website and et cetera, et cetera. So check it out and you can get great Bible teaching there. And I really like the church because unlike so many other places, they're actually teaching what the Bible truly really says. And one thing I'll say, someone else said this and I'm stealing it from them, but it's a great quote. Discernment is not knowing the difference between right and wrong. It's between knowing right and almost right. So that's the thing. Most churches are almost right. This one is pretty much right. <laughs> So a lot of places do various things. They throw in a whole bunch of extra tradition or traditions. They throw in ceremony, rites, rituals, all those things. That's not Christianity. They throw in legalism, also not Christianity. Or they make it so ridiculously simplistic that it just kind of falls short as well. So like there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of like hop off the boat here. The actual real way to be a Christian is simply by faith. A lot of the things people do, they tag on a bunch of rules and regulations. You don't need a bunch of rules and regulations. It is by faith that you're saved. It's by faith that what Jesus Christ did on the cross was sufficient to clear away all of your sins, 
you keep trusting in that finished work on the cross that God did. And that faith connection is like a conduit. Think of it as plugging an electrical outlet or an electrical cord into an outlet. Once you do, the power's flowing. It's the action of God that changes you to have the mind of Christ. And it's an ongoing process for the Lord like for the rest of your life, you aren't immediately transformed. So don't let anyone tell you you're sinless. We're in a sinning container. It's an ongoing process for the rest of your life. And you have to keep walking in that faith and keep that faith connection, have a relationship with God based on trust, on love, and devoting yourself to him. Don't think you have to clean yourself up. Don't think you're going to be sinless. Don't think you have to change anything about yourself. I just recently saw a thing on... YouTube actually, and it was another church, and they were broadcasting something. And I was like, okay, I'll just check it out because every once in a while I give something else a chance. Immediately they started saying, oh, you're not a Christian if you, and then they were doing things like, oh, if you continue on and sin and keep smoking and drinking and partying. Bullshit. <laughs> you're not a Christian if you lose faith. And yeah, sorry, I swore there, but it just pisses me off. So you're not a Christian if you don't have that faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's the only qualification. If you have that faith, you keep walking in it, you amen God, keep trusting God, you are a Christian. God does the changing. If you think, I have to stop doing this, I have to follow these rules, I have to do this, you're doing that in the flesh. It's going to fail. You trust God, God changes you. Because God is changing you, those things will become less important because you are focused on God. It's a totally different thing. So that's why legalism doesn't work. That's why the law didn't work, because we're trying to do it in the flesh. The New Testament is doing it in the spirit. The law was there to show us that in the flesh, we couldn't live up to that standard. The law couldn't save us. It just showed us our shortcomings. The original lie in the garden was that by knowledge of good and evil, we could be like God. We tried to do it in the flesh from then on, and in the flesh, we fail, we fall short, we die. And here's the thing. People say, oh, well, you're living in sin, or you're doing this, so you can't be in the church. Well, guess what? We're all living in sin, because sinning is the state we're in. We're born into this condition. The only thing that changes that is when you put your faith in God and he starts acting upon you and changes you and you have to keep that connection again because some people will tell you it's a one-time deal. It is not. It's continuous. You keep renewing your faith every day and constantly look to God. It's really simple, but you have to keep doing it. The original Greek, when Paul writes down, we're saved by faith, alone. That faith word he's using is pistis. It's a verb. It's ongoing and continuous. Look at the grammar. It's right there. You just have to have faith continually. God changes you. Don't worry about anyone else telling you you have to do anything different than just trust God and walk in faith because basically they're judging you. And don't judge anyone else. Just walk in faith. That's it. That's what makes you a Christian. That's kind of what this uh, church is all about. And they just teach faith, but explain that it is not so simple as to be like a one-time act. Because some people will be like, oh, say the sinner's prayer, or do the dance, turn around three times, and jump in the air, and now you're saved. And it's like, nah, it doesn't work that way. you got to keep going and walking in the faith. Like, do not understand the parable of the sower, hello, and also what Paul writes all throughout. They'll go to Romans and say, oh, look, it's one-time thing, and you're sealed. It's like, yeah, it's a verb, ongoing, continuous, and he's explaining putting on the whole armor of God. So you're going to have to fight the old man, fight the flesh, like, hello. That's because it's not one time, and you have to keep faithing <laughs> it, it, like people just don't get it but that's what it is anyway check the link i'm not going to keep ranting about it um subscribe like comment share and i'll keep writing the songs the lyrics are always about my christian faith basically it's not super and like it's not like i go like super deep or anything but they're just kind of like about that but i do regard my music as just like saying thanks and praising god and i figure I'll say a few things at the end if I can point you in the direction of really good teaching because don't think I'm great teaching, but follow that link and you'll find good teaching. So, yeah, if I can do that, great. Um, anyway, I'm going to go grab some food. 
I'll see you in the next video. The song's going to come out tomorrow, and then after that, the guitar solo. If you're currently subscribed, you probably know that. But if not, that's the deal. See you later. Can't get out of this